News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukot Ali. And a very good evening to you and welcome to Newsline Zoom. And uh, this is probably one of the last ones we're doing by Zoom as uh, matters seem to be settling. We shall be returning to our studios and to our natural habitat. But in the meantime, this evening by Zoom, pre-recorded of course, is uh, that very vociferous politician, Mr. Manu Ganeshan. Mr. Manu Ganeshan, of course, is the leader of the Tamil Progressive Alliance, and he is a member of parliament representing the SJB. Isn't that wonderful? And he's here by Zoom. Very good evening to you, Mr. Ganeshan. Good evening, Paras. Good evening. It's, uh, it's good to see you, um, even if it is by Zoom. Um, of course, uh, the last time you were here, uh, our, um, our dear chairman uh, was still here to watch the program. And um, Yes, uh, permit me to pay my tribute homage to my good friend Kili, Kili Maharaja, your chairman, media boss, entrepreneur, and a gentleman friend. So let us uh, think about him, pay homage to him, tribute to him, and we get this uh, news line up. Indeed. Uh, Newsline, of course, uh, absolute creation of uh, uh, my late chairman, uh, Mr. Rajendran Raja Mahendran, uh, sadly missed, but always remembered. Um, now then, M Mr. Ganeshan, um, what, what were you all doing meeting the Foreign Secretary of India? What was that all about? Yeah, Mr. Harsh Vardhan uh, Zringla, as a Foreign Secretary of India, was here last week. Not only me, many politicians and uh, officials of Sri Lanka met him. India is not uh, just a neighbor, but more than that, to Sri Lanka. India has agreed uh, and had accords with Sri, Sri Lanka, two accords, importantly. One is 1987 Indo Lanka Accord signed by President Jayavardhan and Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, and uh, in 1964. Prime Minister Sriva Bandara Naika and uh, Prime Minister Sastri signed another accord that's called Sriva Sastri Accord. We talked, uh, spoke, discussed both these accords with him. Their obligation on the side of India as well as Sri Lanka is we discussed in a friendly manner. And uh, what uh, what were the specifics? What did they? What did our Indian brothers want us to do specifically? No, no India is very, must say frankly upset and worried about the extraordinary Chinese presence in Sri Lankan soil. They believe that uh, this is Indian Ocean. Sri Lanka is the most closest, uh, India is the most closest nation to Sri Lanka and China is far away. And when uh, Chinese presence here, that China has an unofficial war with India, the northern borders, such a country is extraordinary presence in Sri Lanka that worries them that worries them because they worried about the national security. In fact, in the, they explained in the past, uh, since the northern border of India was very volatile, very aggressive with China and Pakistan on two sides, they wanted to keep the uh, southern border peaceful. That's what they agreed to Sri Lanka on many occasions, uh, gave it to Sri Lanka. Sri Masathri Pact agreed to take back Indian origin people, a large number of back to Sri Lanka, India and uh, also many other aspects. But uh, right now, China is being placed in uh, Sri Lanka, it's worrying them. That's the prime uh, uh, goal uh, on the idea uh, which he came to Sri Lanka. All the others were secondary. Primary issue was the Chinese issue, as I understand. But don't you think that, uh, you know, uh in terms of our neighbor, uh, India, um, and if they they now realize, or uh, they've always known, but they're now a little bit miffed, if you like, because we've um, gone more towards China. But if they were so concerned for uh, the safety and the security of uh, uh, our region, of the Indian Ocean, then they don't you think that there's a case to say, well, why didn't you look after us before? Why now? Just because another girl is on the block in the form of China, uh, you know, and, and now you're a bit jealous. Um, and China, after all, have given us money and loans 
and they've invested in infrastructure and so on. So um, surely the, any government of the day will want to go with the best, uh, with the best terms. Well, it's very straight to put. <laughs> he asked me whether they are jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, that has to be that is answered by Sringla himself or Narendra Modi, the Prime, Prime Minister. I am not Indian, I am Sri Lankan. Of I course. just inform you what they what came out of our talks. Anyway, they describe the Chinese connection with Sri Lanka as a web trap. They say they could call it. Yeah. But uh, the uh, India is in the camp with uh, United States of America. European Union and Japan. They are not alone, they say, they claim. And uh, the large number of Sri Lankan exports go to America and the European Union. And a uh, large number of uh, imports uh, we receive from uh, the from India. So we have a lot of lots of uh, uh, business and communication between this, this, this camp. But when it is China, they only export. That's all. They don't import much. And also, Currently, the Colombo port, the harbor of Colombo, survives because of Indian transshipment. For 70% of the business comes out of Indian uh, transshipment. And that's how the other sports also survive, surviving because of the revenue gain from the, from the port. These are the arguments. Yeah. Will, you, will there be a port in the northern waters of Sri Lanka as well, then? Another yeah, port? There is a port. There's a, there's a yeah. port in, uh, in uh, Trinco. And what about in the north? Do you think there will be plans to develop more port facilities in the north? Yes, but anyway, the Colombo port is the primary port. All other ports are secondary ports, you right. understand. Because Colombo needs to be developed as a hub, economical hub in this region, South Asian region, because that is a, uh, the, the notion cuts through the uh, sea route. So we'll have to be a, a, a hub here. So that hub has to be sustained by all the countries in the region, not only just given to one country. So. I see. Okay, C can we just move on to a bit of local uh, uh, local uh, news? If in fact, uh, what is the po uh, what are what are you as uh, the opposition? What are you all doing at the moment? It's almost uh, it's almost as though the opposition should be ready to take over government tomorrow morning. No, no, we are not in Nari. We are not in Nari. Why should we be in Nari? The government just came in. That's for two, just two years. They are touched two years. Let them go. That's the, that's what you call democracy. But they making mistakes, wrong, wrong, serious mistakes. The president himself, when he was in New York, the prime minister was in Italy. His own ministers were giving trouble to him, not us, more than us. So when the president in New York was talking about human rights, he was answering the human rights lobby there. His own ministers giving. Uh, uh, ideas and uh, making incidents uh, so that uh, uh, those uh, lobbies uh, sent them against Sri Lanka. So that's, that's the trouble for the trouble of the government, not us. Are you, are you, to, uh, you must be referring to the incidents in the prison system. Obviously, yes. I went to the wife, I went into the president, uh, president and checked myself and uh, I came to know the, the state minister went into the prison and uh, drunk with his own personal weapon. And when he, when he called those, particularly named those Tamil prisoners, he called them. And then he loaded his, uh, uh, he has loaded his uh, pistol and it has been prevented by uh, the prison officials. That's how he was told. If otherwise it would have been another, 1983, you can remember, there was a, a massacre in the Velikata prison. So the Black July, Remembers that. So there could have been uh, uh, such an incident occurred while the president himself is in, was in uh, New York. But the, the, the wider message was very poor indeed, wasn't it? Because uh, the president's talking about human rights and uh, uh, almost um, around the same time uh, we had this incident um, which can't uh, go down well for good governance, surely. Yes. Also, also, President also the court have said that uh, he has uh, established democracy here. The rights to demonstrate, rights to protest are all uh, established here. He respect. While he's saying that his minister, Sarath Mirasekhar, says, warns the teachers, don't come out. I'll arrest you all. He says. So it's not contradicts. 
his own uh, government, his own president. So, the president, prime minister, his own bosses, government bosses and party bosses. So, uh, from what I hear and what you're saying as well, uh, there are serious issues for the government and they're all quite literally man-made, self-made, self-inflicted damage. So surely uh, all the opposition has to do now is walk into uh, the rooms of power. Isn't that, isn't it, is it as simple as that? No, I don't think so. It's not simple as that. If we don't get our acts together, if, all, if we don't come together, uh, there are a large number of pieces in the opposition who must get all together and arrange a vehicle that is called a Grand Alliance with a Common Minimum Program. Unless you do that, there's another Rajapaksa will go for another round. And uh, when you are all together in a, grave, uh, in a great and important alliance, uh, do you think that um, the, the chauffeur, the driver, or the, the prime person, Sajid Premadasa, is now uh, ready uh, to take it all on? Yes, but there is no hurry now because Sajid is our leader of the SJB Alliance and SJB party itself. And uh, we work with him. There is no issue over it. But Sajid has just taken over a party leadership just two years before. So you can't compare it with any other experienced leaders, politicians who had been leading their parties, respective parties for uh, two, three decades. So let us give him some time too. Let us be spared by him. Give some time, but he's not ready. So we, we are not also in a hurry. So let's see. Goes. What is uh, your leader's commitment to uh, uh, resolving the crisis in the plantation sector? There is. Uh, uh, tell me about that. Yes, there is a crisis in the plantation sector right now. Uh, the currently the livelihood revenues of all uh, collapsed uh, of the plantation because of collapse as never in the history before. So without fixing these uh, issues, uh, there can be peaceful uh, environment in the industry itself, plantation industry. As you know, plantation industry, tea rubber industry is the permanent uh, foreign exchange earner for Sri Lanka for so many years, so many decades, so many, for more than a century. So we'll have to get it. Now there's a crisis going on uh, between a uh, uh, kind of a volatile situation, uh, kind of violent situation is prevailing there. There is a lot of conflict between the managers of the plantations that uh, states and with the uh, on one side, other side, the workers and the competition on the other side. Right now, there are crises in all other sectors like the fishermen are on the street, the uh, gobias, the farmers are on the street, but government is attending some of them. Okay? But as far as the plantation workers are concerned, government is just ignored. They added all them to the companies and just ignored it, closing the eyes. That's what the basis for the crisis. So we wanted to ask the government, tell the government, look at it, attend to it. Otherwise, there is, there is, the, the crisis is inevitable. People will come out of the street. That is also. But, but Mr. Ganeshan, um, you know, I hear what you say and I see what I see and read the news and so on. But um, the fact is, uh, if we look at the tea sector, just alone, only the tea sector, you know, um, a few years ago, they celebrated 150 years of tea. Tea, Ceylon tea is available in the finest um, supermarkets and tea shops and tea bars around the world. Uh, one brand is a household name in uh, Australasia. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, uh, it makes your hair sort of stand up when you see these things with pride. But in 150 years and 73 years of independence, sadly, there are still people, our brothers and our sisters, living in maybe 12 by 15 rooms, two, three generations sometimes, in what we is now known as line rooms. Their lot hasn't improved m much, has it, in the last 150 years? Yes, during our, our tenure, last, uh, during our government, we were in the part of the government. And last four years, we were in the government. During that time, it was a golden period. We uh, get the, got the uh, cabinet approval for seven purchase and products available to the every plantation families and const started constructing uh, houses, separate houses with Sri Lankan government aid as well as Indian government aid. We do that, we started. Not a, but it started. That's all small world, all, 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 all
just last week, I think you saw in the television, were uh, commenced and opened up by the current government, but nothing happened during this government. At all what happened during our government was such a good yeah? We got invited by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to uh, our country, had a gala grand meeting there. They got him to give us assurance for another 10,000 more uh, houses. So we, we did, we started the process. Got government approval for lots of land and separate houses in place of so called nine roads. But I must tell you, the number of plantation workers right now is come down. It has come down. Now it's only 150,000 workers. Some a decade ago, it was. Uh, 500,000 or 600,000, now it has come down. People have gone out of, uh, yes, out of uh, states for, for this other uh, employment. Yeah. And on that note, uh, let's go for a short break and have a quick peek at this evening's headlines and um, come back to uh, Mr. Manu Ganesh and let's find out why uh, the plantation workers are still suffering, shall we? On that note, we'll see you on the other side of the break. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And welcome back to Newsline Zoom. I'm in conversation with the Member of Parliament from the SJB, Mr. Manu Ganeshan. Mr. Ganeshan, thank you for your take on the plantation uh, sector workers. Why is it that the, the, the plantation uh, worker numbers have come down? Are they better educated? Why? Yes, because plantation are not uh, providing uh, proper income revenues, opening up income revenues for them. So therefore, naturally, they seek income revenues and employments outside plantations. In fact, right, they come to, they move into Colombo and other cities, and they go into the business and, uh, and other social revenues, social economic revenues, it's natural. So that's, you can't blame that because unless and until plantation attracts them, they will remain there. Otherwise, they, will, they, are, they are free, they are liberal, uh, they are liberty to come out. And is the, on, is the onus on uh, the government or the plantation companies? No, no, both together. Now the government has uh, let, the, let the plantation companies take the lands on a long lease. So it is, it is managed by them. And there are uh, three state-owned plantation corporations also, like, like Janavasama, and uh, there are three, three plantation companies. They are also not do, doing well. So sometimes what happens is now plantation lands have been taken away from those uh, plantation companies, the corporate state-owned uh, plantation entities, and given to others on various uh, uh, dubious reasons. So the plantation workers who have been living there for centuries, centuries, are denied the land rights. So unless until they give land rights, uh, provide them for them, so they they will have their own. Uh, um, um, outgrown, um, uh, uh, they, they'll outgrow the tea bushes of uh, other, others, of, uh, of potatoes, or vegetables elsewhere, and, uh, and adapt to the uh, um, uh, national economy. Now, also, they will also come up, the, the uh, upcountry also will come up. Government also will be uh, economically, uh, it will be beneficial to the government also. And in the, in the wider scheme of things, uh, do you think that the appointment of uh, or yeah, the proposed appointment of Mr. Jeevan Tiagaraja as the uh, governor of the uh, Northern Province. Um, does that augur well or is it another political gimmick? No, it's too early to give uh, rulings on that. But anyway, Jeevan Tiagaraja is a known person, he's a friend of mine. In fact, uh, I had appointed him as the board member of the uh, Official Languages Commission when I was the minister in charge of that uh, uh, subject. And then he went into the uh, election commission last uh, December. And he has taken out judge of the uh, national province uh, as governor. It's fine because now, right now, we have a nationalist government in force in Sri Lanka. Therefore, we can't keep on fighting at the government at each and every uh, front. So we let us work. There should be a kind of a working relationship with the government. Because and it's the government. Though we are the opposition, it is the government. So we need to have a working, working relationship with the government. So I think. So uh, we, we can remain optimistic. Yes, that's what I mean. But how optimistic are you for the betterment, the quality of life, and the various concerns that the people of the North, the former conflict area people, what, what, how optimistic are you for them 
um, 12 years after the end of the so-called uh, war. The immediate necessity is holding the Provincial Council elections. The whole world is telling us, India is telling us, America is telling us, European Union is telling us. We ourselves tell our government, conduct the elections immediately. And, and over what is promised in the 30th Amendment, the law, part of the part of our constitution, let them rule their regions within one undivided Sri Lanka, indivisible Sri Lanka. So that, because there was a provincial council earlier, but it was the first Northern Provincial Council, therefore there were some two thing problems occurred, so we need to do well. But now uh, things have come right, so let the, the Provincial Council begin. Because otherwise, Jeevan Tiagaraja will be the uh, <laughs> ruler of the Northern Province. It can't happen like that. Jeevan Tiagaraja has to be a governor. And the Northern Province Council, the legislators elected with the people's mandate, should govern the province. That will be a beginning. Mr. Ganeshan, can I ask you this? As a um, member of the Tamil community, um, what do you do? You believe in a one Sri Lanka? Yes, of course. I am a Sri Lankan first. Then comes I am a Tamil. Uh, then I am a Tamil or Hindu, Tamil speaker. All comes second, third, fourth. But first of all, I am Sri Lankan, basically. Do the majority of the Tamil voting population in, so, let's say, in the, in the traditional sectors like the plantation sector and in the north uh, and in the east, do you feel that they have the same belief and the same feeling of patriotism uh, for this country and are committed to one Sri Lanka just as you are? Let me be straight and sincere and honest to you. I don't think so that uh, they, the people in the Northern East, my brother, yeah, would be, uh, would consider themselves as Sri Lankans as I consider in pride from Colombo. But they have the legitimate reasons. Now, the government of the day, government of Sri Lanka, should be able to win over the minds and hearts of the Tamil people there. But what is happening in Colombo right now from here is alienating them. So the fault is not there, the fault is here. Now, for example, now, when during our government, we made the Tamil version of the national anthem, the official anthem in Sri Lanka. So, that anthem is same as his code, same translation as a, as a trilingual, I know, but it's in Sinhala, but it's in Tamil. It's the same translation. I, did, I, played, I played the lead role in bringing that back into the fold as the Minister of National Integration. But when this government came into power, government of Gautama Rajabhasa, the first act they did was took that away. So that is alienated them. So while alienating them, you can't blame them. You have to get them the feel, give them the feeling of Sri Lankanness. When they sing the national anthem, praise Sri Lanka, not Tamil Elam, but praise Sri Lanka in Tamil language. They get a sense of, they, they get a feel. So they are allowed to give them the feeling. So what is here, not there. The war is over. Now, the official is TNA, their party, the biggest party in the Northern East, has officially denounced armed struggle, denounced uh, separation. They agreed for better Sri Lanka. That's fine. We'll take it from that. Well, you know, I like the passion. Um, uh, f finally, I, I want to just ask you, um, uh, recently we had a delegation from the European Union uh, to look at the GSP plus and so on. Um, when you meet such people in your working life and so on, foreigners, um, are you sometimes ashamed uh, at the things that they ask you uh, what's happening in your country, where it appears to be that parts of our population are not being treated equally? Are you ashamed when you hear such questions from the foreigners? I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of Sri Lanka. But I love Sri Lanka. But I'm ashamed of Sri Lanka too. So what's, what's happening here? But we have a model here. Not only that, Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa. When the right 80s, in the south, during the rebellion, large number of single youths went missing. Large number of uh, human rights issues came up. He who led that delegation to Geneva, the minister, current minister, Mahesha Yunanekar, and even his activist, Himalka Fernando, accompanied him. He went to Geneva 
then met the, then it was human rights committee, not commission, now it is commission, then it was committee, he met them. He also met Inter Amnesty International, then came back to Sri Lanka and spoke in the parliament of Sri Lanka. It is in the answer. He proudly said, I went and met them. And he also advised the Western countries who were donating or granting or uh, part participating in Sri Lankan development programs. When you grant AIDS and assist Sri Lanka, connect that with the human rights conditions here. He said so. That is an answer. So he is the leader. He gave us the model. He had been the model to us. So nobody can blame us for taking the issues outside Sri Lanka. From the European Union, for Americans, or, or Indians, nobody can blame us. So when you when it something is food for Mahindra it should be food for monogarishan too. It can be poison to me. So anyway, basically, uh, the answer to your question is that I'm ashamed of participating here. I find a part of Sri Lankans, Tamils or Muslims, or non Sinhalese or Catholics are being uh, treated in a less lesser manner. It's shameful. That should go away. We let it, we let it come up. Uh, Sri Lankans. That's very important. So, so Mahinda Rajapaksa going off to the to Geneva and so, and meeting the Human Rights Committee, as it was then called, uh, those could be described as uh, the heady days of unity, the heavy, the heady days of unity. But uh, what went wrong? Do you think very quickly because we're coming to the end of our program? But what went wrong from those heady days of? Uh, uh, unity and concern for human rights. What's happened now? What led that erosion? Yes, because human rights being violated in Sri Lanka from the very beginning, from the 80s itself. You can't say now. It, didn't, it did not start in, 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 the, in this, this uh, century. Because it was there last time also. So, 80s people went missing. The extrajudicial killings and uh, enforced abductions all were there since from since 80s it's yes, been there so but that time it was in the south later it was in the northern east then first first uh, earlier it was targeting the singular uh, youths the singular community the protesters later it was against the tamils and lately now it was it's against the muslims so we like to think as sri lankans and build our country and this country don't forget this country has the uh, second highest foreign reserve in the 1940s when we got liberated. We have to only touch Japan. But what is about it now? We have gone down. We have been begging from uh, Bangladesh. Thanks to Bangladesh. Thanks to other countries. We have gone down economically. So all the successive governments which failed, which ruled this country, uh, should take responsibility. I'm just not telling just the Gota Rajabas government. All the governments. We will have to sit and sit as Sri Lanka, take stock of what happened in the past. Learn from our mistakes, build our country as Sri Lankans. Manu Ganeshan, as always, it's been fascinating talking to you. Thank you. And uh, on that note, it's, uh, that's the way it was on uh, Newsline Zoom to, uh, this evening. Do take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend ahead of you. Uh, perhaps you can uh, explore things that you haven't been able to do in the last two years. Take care, and as always, God bless you.